Hey, how's it going? Hope you're doing great. I'm here with the recent reads, books 6 through 10, uh, that I read recently-ish, sorta, kinda, months and months ago, but let's, let's, let's pretend that I read these recently, okay? And let's just talk about them. So, yeah. The first book that I will be talking about today is The Sword of Cortez. The Sword of Cortez is the fourth book in the Jack Sparrow series by Rob Kidd. For those that are unaware, although you probably all already know because I don't shut up about these books, this is the prequel series to Pirates of the Caribbean, Jack Sparrow's origin story as a teenager. You know, it's a, it's a lot of fun. Rum, treasure, uh, ghost pirates. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and this installment in the series being about, you guessed it, the Sword of Cortez, this this pirate in the background, that's Cortez. So this sword, the Sword of Cortez, this all-powerful sword that if you are in the possession of, you can rule the seas. So obviously, being Jack Sparrow, he, he finds a way to get his hands on it. And once he does, you know, trouble ensues. To be honest, up to this point in the series, I was enjoying the books quite a lot. You know, they're they're fast, there's a lot of action, adventure, but with this one, nothing really happened. Uh, things sort of came to a standstill. Um, there was not a lot of movement. And the things that did happen in this, they didn't really feel important to Jack's story as a whole. They just felt pointless, and so Mm -mm. It's not terrible by any means, and if you were a child reading this, which is the intended audience, you would probably enjoy this a lot. I don't really have much more to say. You can read these books in under an hour, they're that short, but I'm still enjoying the series as a whole. I've read more of these since then, and I will talk about them later. They're good, they're good, they're fun, but you know. This one just is my least favorite. And after that, I read We Have Always Lived in the Castle by Shirley Jackson. This was first published in 1962, I think. And for those that don't know, uh, this is my first Shirley Jackson book that I've ever read. And uh, having read this, I need to read more Shirley Jackson yesterday, months ago. Why haven't I read more by her yet after reading this? I don't know. I really want to read either The Lottery or The Haunting, and I don't know which one I want to purchase first, so let me know which do you recommend. I would highly appreciate it. I read this in the beginning of February, I believe, one morning while drinking coffee, and I read it in one sitting, and that doesn't happen that often with me. I mean, it is a really short book, so it's definitely a one sitting kind of book, but I don't read books that fast normally. I forgot to tell you what this book is about. I always forget to do that. I just go on long random tangents, but We Have Always Lived in the Castle is the story of two sisters, Mary Cat and Constance Blackwood. They live on their family's giant estate on the outskirts of this of this town a small town that seems to have shunned them you know they're the outcast and, and why are they shunned you may be wondering um, well not too long ago there were seven blackwoods living in that family estate now there's only two which means five are gone dead poisoned murdered who did it? I know who did it, but I won't tell you. And if you want to know, you should read this book so you can join the club on the people that know who poisoned the sugar bowl. That's how they died, the sugar bowl. <laughs> okay, so this book. I don't even know where to begin really, but uh, this book is extremely short, so short. But you know what? It's so rich and well-crafted in its storytelling that it doesn't need to be any longer than it is. It's just, it's just perfect. This book is really eerie and unsettling, but it also has this dark humor to it that just hooks you in. The narrator of this book is Mary Cat. She's the younger sister of Constance. And so the narration of this is rather childlike, you know? She's not that young. She's actually 18, but she has this childlike quality to her. And normally with younger voices, I can find them to be a little uh, whiny, annoying, that's just me personally, but with her, she was creepy, weird, uh, she made me very uncomfortable at times, but she was also somehow really charming some way, I don't know how, and that's what really sold me on this book. I don't want to get into any spoilers or anything, but I really like the conclusion of this. I think for some people it's hit or miss, but for me I just thought it was really bittersweet. 
and it just it worked really well for me so I really really like this also I believe that they're adapting this into a film they might have already filmed it I don't know when it's coming out but I've, I'm really stoked for it and I can't wait so and then after that uh, I read Mega by Jake Bible. I will have a picture of it here somewhere because uh, I read it on my tablet. Uh, this was a gift from Devin from Indie Insomniac. So Devin, if you're watching this, again I say thank you. From the cover, I'm sure you could tell. Uh, you know, mega sharks, giant sharks. Uh, it's a great time. Obviously a roller coaster ride of awesomeness. Uh, it was though, it, it really was. But what this book actually is about, uh, our main character, Darren, he's an ex-Navy SEAL, and recently he's been going through a lot of financial struggles, and so the bank repos and takes away his ship, his glorious ship. And so him and his crew are now without a boat, and that sucks, um, until, until this mysterious man of large fortune shows up and says, hey, I will help you get your ship back if you help me uh, rescue uh, these sailors that are being held hostage by these Somali pirates. Pirates and sharks in the same book, you guys my heart. This book is ridiculous. It's so ridiculous, but it is so much fun. I can't say I would necessarily recommend this book to everyone. I'm not even sure who to rec- if you like sharks and ridiculous sci-fi films, you will enjoy this book. I enjoyed this a lot. I love this, but you know, it's not for everyone. Devin actually gifted me two books, the second book being Zeburbia by the same author as Mega, and I read that right after reading Mega, so picture here. In case you couldn't tell, this book is about zombies, you know, zombies brains. This is a zombie apocalypse book, post-apocalyptic. Um, this book it takes place in this suburban area where this group of people have been able to survive in this suburban like town and you know they're living pretty normally considering there are zombies outside their fences that are trying to get in and you know brains and such. Uh, but of course in this suburban area where people are thriving Things can only go wrong, you know, corruption and craziness ensues and zombies get in, people die, blah blah blah, survival. This really reminded me of The Walking Dead. If you take all the soap opera-ness of The Walking Dead, which I hate, out of it, you, you took that out of it and throw in more humor and f-bombs and, and, and you get this and it was great. This book is told from the point of view of our main character Jake and I don't think I would have enjoyed this as much as I did if this character wasn't as humorous and uh, kind of witty as he was. He was, it was a great character. And because of that, I'm also tempted to read the rest of the books in this series. I'm just really, with series, I just, series, you know. I think if you're a fan of the whole zombie craze, you would enjoy this, you know, uh, if you enjoy The Walking Dead, or if you enjoy the humor that's in Zombieland or in Shaun of the Dead, you would also really like this. And then I read The Luminaries by uh, Eleanor Catton. This, I believe, was the winner of the Man Booker Prize in 2013, and it's a behemoth of a book. It is huge, it's giant, and it took me nearly a month to read. So this, this consumed my life for quite a long time, but it was completely worth it. I love this book so freaking much. Oh, this is a historical fiction mystery that takes place in 1866. Our mysterious main character, Walter Moody, has just come by way of ship to New Zealand where he hopes to make a fortune via the gold fields. And as he arrives that very night, he stumbles upon this meeting of 12 men. And these 12 men have come together in secret to discuss some recent events that seem to be shaking up this town. Those events being um, a young rich man has gone missing, uh, a prostitute has recently tried to take her own life, and a small fortune has been found at the home of the town's drunk. And so Walter Moody is sort of just thrown into this mystery and we're just kind of along for the ride. So we already know I love this book, 
but um, this book is incredibly clever. It's so complicated, right? It's like a jigsaw puzzle, a, a giant jigsaw puzzle where you're given all the pieces but you don't have the picture to go off of, so you're just really confused. But as you start to put this puzzle together bit by bit, you start to sort of see the picture and as soon as you finish it, everything makes sense and it's just... Oh. Th that's what this book felt like to me. This book is really long, like I said before, but it's not a drag, you know, it doesn't feel like it's too much. It feels like this book needed to be this long, and I can't imagine it being any shorter than it is, because it just needs to be this long, okay? <laughs> the writing is really elegant and classic, and where I can see not everyone enjoying that, I thought it was lovely and I liked it a lot. There was this astrological and zodiac aspect of the book that the author threw in there and it was really interesting to see how she connected each of her characters to these signs and once you pick up on it it's just it's really interesting. Overall I think my favorite part of this book was the experience. The entire reading experience of this book was just so immersing and just just a really great read and i think for that alone i would recommend this book so i really really enjoyed the luminaries and i highly recommend it if you have not read it although i i like to think that most of booktube has read this because it was everywhere for the longest time but i don't know who's actually read this so if you have let me know and if you haven't and you own the book then give it a chance because it's really really good and those are the five books that i will be talking about in today's recent reads if you You've read any of these if you have any thoughts or opinions leave them in the comments down below i would love to talk with you all i hope you're doing well i would like to tell you that i'll have another recent reads very soon but that could possibly be a lie in fact it's very likely it would be a lie but you never know you never know so we'll see um i hope you guys have a great day or night wherever you are and i will see you in another video soon bye